Hello guys, how are you? Welcome to our pet online class. Remember, this is our sixth class. This will be available from Monday to Wednesday. Now guys, let's see our index of today. First, do you remember what we celebrated? Then, classwork. We're going to explain you your homework. And at the end, we're going to check your workbook. Remember, you have homework. Ready to work? So let's see. What did we celebrate last Sunday? Do you remember? Well, we celebrated Mother's Day. So let's see. Here we have a notebook activity. So take out your notebook and prepare everything you need. We're going to write all about my mom. Remember, it can be about your mom, your grandmother, your aunt, whoever you want. Now, I'm going to show you some questions, some sentences, and you are going to write them in your notebook, but you are going to complete them. For example, the first one says, my mom's name is, you are going to copy this in your notebook with the answer. She is years old. Is the color that my mom likes the most. Is a TV show that she watches every day. Is the food which my mom enjoys the most. Is the singer who she loves. My mom gets angry every time that I. My mom gets happy every time that I. My mom cooks the best. And the last one, I love my mom because. Ready? So if you haven't finished, pause the video, copy the sentences and answer them. Guys, I really hope you know all the answers. If you don't know the answers, after class, go to spend some time with your mom. Now let's get to work. For our classwork, we need the student book. So open your student book on page 106 and 107. Now the first exercise, it's listening. It says, listen to four conversation. What form of entertainment is each one about? Complete the first row of the table. So here we have a table and you are going to complete with the correct form of entertainment. So let's listen. One. Did you get my email? Yes, but I haven't looked at it yet. Hold on while I find it. I sent you a link to something you might like to see this weekend. It's a photo exhibit of work by an Italian artist who paints people to look like animals. His name is Johannes Stutter. Like face paintings? No, they're whole bodies. They're like living sculptures. So he might get two or three people standing in a certain position to create the shape of the animal. And then they're painted to look exactly like that animal. It's incredible. Okay, just opening the link now. Wow, is that a person? Oh yeah. Okay, so I can see someone sitting down with their knees up. I see her feet. Which one are you looking at? The angelfish. That's so cool. Two. Come From Away is the new show which opened last night on Toronto's Broadway. Deborah, you went to see it last night. Yes, I did. Okay, so it's a moving, true story of how a small town opened its doors to strangers when they needed help. The production of this musical is not big or expensive, but this reflects the small town theme of community spirit. The script explores new relationships well, and there are some well-written songs the audience really enjoyed. As far as the acting went, everyone was good, but I particularly liked Kendra Kessebaum's performance. Tickets are on sale now. Three. 
So if you could recommend just one podcast that I should listen to, which would it be? That's easy. I absolutely love a show called 99% Invisible. It's a show that's on every week, but I've downloaded all the old episodes. They're free. So what's it about? It's really interesting about all the design around us that we don't notice because it's so good. I learned so much just listening to it. It's really cool. And the editing is creative, so it's really easy to follow and understand. Four. Who are you listening to? The Aces. I love them. They were the first band I saw live. Oh, did you? I'd love to see them. Yeah, I love listening to them. But watching them on stage, the performance, the music and the lyrics, the whole thing comes alive. Now let's see which forms of entertainment. Number one, which is it? Well, number one is a photo exhibit. Number two, a musical. Number three, podcast. And number four, a music group. Now, guys, for the next exercise, we're going to listen again, and you are going to write the things that are described. For example, in which one of the, of the four forms of entertainment is in, an, is in a venue? Remember, venue is like a place. So we have more than one answer. In this one, we have number one, a photo exhibit is in a place. Number two, a musical. And number four, a music group. Ready? Now you're going to listen and you are going to mark here with X. Remember, you can have more than one answer. One. Did you get my email? Yes, but I haven't looked at it yet. Hold on while I find it. I sent you a link to something you might like to see this weekend. It's a photo exhibit of work by an Italian artist who paints people to look like animals. His name is Johannes Stutter. Like face paintings? No, they're whole bodies. They're like living sculptures. So he might get two or three people standing in a certain position to create the shape of the animal. And then they're painted to look exactly like that animal. It's incredible. Okay. Just opening the link now. Wow, is that a person? Oh yeah. Okay, so I can see someone sitting down with their knees up. I see her feet. Which one are you looking at? The angelfish. That's so cool. Two. Come From Away is the new show which opened last night on Toronto's Broadway. Deborah, you went to see it last night. Yes, I did. Okay, so it's a moving, true story of how a small town opened its doors to strangers when they needed help. The production of this musical is not big or expensive, but this reflects the small town theme of community spirit. The script explores new relationships well, and there are some well-written songs the audience really enjoyed. As far as the acting went, everyone was good, but I particularly liked Kendra Kassebaum's performance. Tickets are on sale now. Three. So if you could recommend just one podcast that I should listen to, which would it be? That's easy. I absolutely love a show called 99% Invisible. It's a show that's on every week but I've downloaded all the old episodes. They're free. So what's it about? It's really interesting about all the design around us that we don't notice because it's so good. I learned so much just listening to it. It's really cool. And the editing is creative. So it's really easy to follow and understand. Four. Who are you listening to? The Aces. I love them. They were the first band I saw live. 
Oh, did you? I'd love to see them. Yeah, I love listening to them, but watching them on stage, the performance, the music and the lyrics, the whole thing comes alive. Now, please, guys, pause the video and complete your answers so we can check. So, letter B, which can be enjoyed at home? We have one, three, and four. Next one, which are recommended by one of the speakers? Number one, number two, and number three, a photo exhibit, a musical, and a podcast. Which are known by both speakers already? A music group. And letter E, which are about things that are true? Number two and number three, that's correct. Now let's continue guys. For the next exercise, you are going to match the two parts of the sentences. For example, number one says, he's an Italian artist. He's an Italian artist I saw live, which opened last night on Toronto's Broadway. The audience really enjoyed, who paints people to look like animals, or that I should listen to, which would it be? What is the answer? So number one, he's an Italian artist who paints people to look like animals. Now please, pause the video and answer in your book. Now let's check the answers, guys. Number two, Come From Away is a new show which opened last night on Toronto's Broadway. Number three, there are some well-written songs the audience really enjoyed. Number four, if you could recommend just one podcast that I should listen to, which would it be? And the last one, number five, they were the first band I saw live. Ready? Now, guys, guess what? Today's class, we're going to check some grammar. So take out your notebook, prepare your markers, prepare your colors, your pens, prepare whatever you need. This is a notebook activity. So please, you are going to write this in your notebook. Now guys, before we start, I want you to listen and, see, and watch the video and then you take notes. Ready? So here we go. Now let's see. When do we use defining relative clauses? When do we use defining relative clauses, guys? Well, we use defining relative clauses because they give us extra information about a noun and they complete the meaning of a sentence. For example, imagine one friend tells you, that is a movie. And you're like, which movie? The movie I was telling you about. So if we just say the movie, we don't understand, right? But then the movie I was telling you about, now we know which movie. The name of this part is main clause. And the name of this part is defining relative clause. This is the part that gives us more information. Now, here we have a space. Why do we have a space, guys? Because there we can write some relative pronouns. Do you remember the relative pronouns? Well, we have which, that is for objects and ideas, who, for people, that, for objects, idea, people, places, and where, that is just for places. So in this case, guys, the movie I was telling you about, the movie who I was telling you about, the movie where I was telling you about, that is not possible. So we can write which and we can write that. Yes? Now, let's see some examples. Here we have two sentences, guys. What is the difference? Please read the sentences and tell me. What is the difference?
I'm going to give you a clue. Do you know the answer? Well, let's see the difference. The first sentence says, he's an Italian artist, paints people to look like animals. Mm. Does the sentence make sense? He's an Italian artist, paints people to look like animals. No. In the first sentence, if we don't write the relative pronoun, the sentence doesn't make sense. So we need the relative pronoun. He's an Italian artist who paints people to look like animals. In the second sentence, there are some well-written songs the audience really enjoyed. In this sentence, the relative pronoun is not necessary and it's optional. So if you write it, it's okay. And if you don't write it, it's okay. Now, how do we know the difference? Well, in the first sentence, the relative pronoun is a subject. Why? Let's see an example. Here we have two sentences. The boy solved the puzzle. He was praised by the teacher. The boy and he is the same subject. So the boy who solved the puzzle was praised by the teacher. If we have the same subject, we need the relative pronoun. And after the relative pronoun, we have a verb. Yes? Now let's check the other example. In the other example, the relative pronoun is an object. How do we know? Well, let's see. The package arrived today. My brother sent it. The package is a subject and my brother is a subject. But they are different. In this case, the boy and he is the same person. And here, the package and my brother, they are different. So, the package that my brother sent arrived today. Here we have that. And we have another subject. Ready? So, in the first example, we have a verb, subject, verb. So we need the relative pronoun. In the second example, subject, subject. So we don't need the relative pronoun. Is that clear? Listen again. Subject, verb, we need the relative pronoun. Subject, subject, we don't need the relative pronoun. In this one, we have the same subject. In this one, we have different subjects. Now let's see a summary. The relative pronoun is a subject. That means that we need the relative pronoun when, when we have the same subject, the boy and he. If we have the same subject, we need it. So we have subject, and verb, subject, verb. We don't need the relative pronoun when we have different subjects. For example, the package and my brother. And we have subject, subject. So the package my brother sent arrived today. Here, we don't need the relative pronoun. Now guys, I know it's kind of tricky, but make your notes. Try to play the video as many times as you need. And we're going to answer some exercise, so don't worry. By this time, please, I recommend you to pause the video to take your notes in your notebook so you can answer the exercises. Now let's see, in exercise 12, we have Look at the sentences in the grammar box. And we're going to answer these questions. Which word in bold? We have two sentences, sentence A and sentence B. The first one says, 
It's a show that is on every week. Letter B. He's a singer that I can listen to all day long. Ready? So the first one. Which word in bold? We have that and we have that. Which word in bold could be replaced by who? And which one could be replaced by which? So, number one. In the letter A, we're talking about a show. So, it can be replaced with which. In letter B, we're talking about a person. So, we can replace it with who. Number two. Which word in bold is the subject of the verb in the relative clause? Which is the object? So let's see. Letter A says, it's a show that is on every week. Here we have subject, verb. And in the second one, we have subject, subject. So in letter A, Remember, when we have a subject and a verb, it's a subject. And when we have two subjects, it's an object. It sounds confusing, but I know that when you take your notes, you are going to get the idea. And number three, in which one could be omitted? Remember, we can omit the relative clause when we have two subjects. So is that in letter A? Or in letter B? In letter B. Okay, guys. So after that explanation, we are going to move on to exercise number 13. Combine the two sentences into one sentence with a relative clause. Omit the relative pronoun if possible. So we have number one as an example. The play wasn't very good. I saw it last week. The play I saw last week wasn't very good. Now remember, we always need to use a relative pronoun if we have a verb after that. If we have a noun, it's not necessary. As you can see, number one, the play, then we have I, so both are nouns, we don't need to use the relative pronoun. So please pause here and answer in your book, and we're going to be checking, all right? All right, let's start checking. A Shakespeare production closed after only two weeks. It only sold 100 tickets. The, sex, the Shakespeare production blank after only two weeks. Now, we are going to be talking about the thing that the Shakespeare production only sold. We're going to use sold. So, over here, because of verb, we need the relative pronoun. So, we have the Shakespeare production, which... Only sold 100 tickets closed after two weeks. Number three. The book is the longest book he's ever read. He needed three months to finish it. The book, blah, 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 he's ever read. So we're going to move on to from the book to he. The book and he both are nouns. We don't need the relative clause. So we end up saying the book he needed three months to finish is the longest he's ever read. Number four, an actor has been given a pay rise. She demanded the same salary as her ma male colleagues. An actor who demanded the same salary as her male colleagues has been given a pay rise. Again, we use who because after the noun, after the subject, we have a verb. So we do need to put the relative pronoun there. Five. The character spoiled the story for me. She was played by Mara Wilson. Now, the character, yada yada, story for me. So, we have the character, we're going to talk about who played the character. Play. So, we were using a verb here, so we have to use the relative noun. Who was played by Mara Wilson spoiled the story for me. Six. You're talking about the documentary on New York, aren't you? We saw it together. You're talking about that documentary we saw together. Now, to notice here that that is part of the subject, I mean of the object, 
but not an actual reality clause that we're seeing right now. Yes, so because we're talking about you and then that documentary, we don't need a relative clause here. Well, you, we don't need a relative net pronoun here. And going on to the next exercise, we have 14. Add the information in sentences 1 through 8 into the paragraph about body painters. Use a relative clause and who or which. So, in this one, it asks us you can use who or which in any of these, but you can al we can also detect where we don't need to use it, okay? So, we have the text over here and we have eight sentences. So, John, John Scudder is an Italian artist, and then we have number one, which is John Scudder uses human models to make art. We're already talking about John's, so we are going to omit that. And over here we see the example, who uses human models to create art? Because we're talking about a verb immediately after the subject. So please pause and try to fit these sentences into each number with the relative clause that it needs. Okay, let's check this together. So, he creates images of plants and animals and plants with people. And then says, you cannot see the people because they're covered in paint. People cannot see. We have a noun, then a verb. So we do need that relative pronoun. Who you can't see because they're covered in paint. Well, in this case, it's optional, sorry. It's optional to say who, because we're talking about you. I was thinking about can't, but yes. Next, we have the images that the images have made him famous. So, we're talking about the images, the image, the images. So, we immediately have a verb, the images which have made him famous. We have to include that which are sculptures and they can take up to eight hours to complete. He painted a tropical frog. Then we have number four. The painting became popular in 2013. So he painted a tropical frog. We're going from the frog to became popular. So of course from noun to verb we have to use which. Which became popular in 2013 because we're talking about a thing, the painting, we're using which. Then, a video 5, he made the video to show how the image was created, went viral. So, we are going from the video to, he made the video to show how the image was created. Then, a video he made, we don't need to use the video because we're already talking about that, he made to show how the image was created. Okay, a video he, we're talking about from noun to noun, we don't need that relative pronoun. It's optional. A video he made to show how the image was created went viral. Next we have we seem to love any art and then six art cleverly tricks the eye in this way. So of course we are going to omit the repeated art. So any art cleverly tricks. Cleverly it's a uh, adverb but we are also talking about the verb mainly. So, noun, verb, we need to use that relative pronoun, which cleverly tricks the eye in this way. John Strutter is one of a number of artists, then we have seven. These artists use the human body as their canvas. Uh, we have an asterisk on canvas. Canvas is like the fabric that you can paint on. You see in paintings that they have like a, it has like a um, fabric texture. So... It's mounted on a wooden frame that is a canvas. Yes, so they use the human body as their canvas. So, one of a number of artists. Artists, and then we have use. Noun, verb, that means we are going to use which? I mean, who? Who, because we're talking about a person. Who use the human body as their canvas? But he's perhaps the best known. In fact, a few years ago, he won a few body painting championships. This one is kind of hard. Uh, we need to use which. Which the best international artists compete in each year. Yes. Now, 
I also like to put in at the beginning, but that's up to you. In which the be the best international artists compete each year, in can go there or there. Okay. Hello, I'm Quentin, and I'm here to tell you what you have for homework. You have workbook page 100 and page 101. And first, we have a listening exercise 11. Listen to a tour guide in Paris, France, and match the statements with the photos A, B, or C. You will listen to three audios. The first one about the Mona Lisa, the second about the Wind Victory, and the last one about Notre Dame. Here is the audio. And here, ladies and gentlemen, as I'm sure you all know, is the Mona Lisa. The portrait, which we believe was painted between 1503 and 1506, is the work of the Italian artist Leonardo da Vinci. The subject of the portrait is Lisa Gherardini, the wife of an Italian official. The painting is owned by the French government and is on permanent display here at the Louvre. Many people consider the painting to be da Vinci's masterpiece and the most famous painting in the world. And here, ladies and gentlemen, we have the Winged Victory. It is a marble sculpture of Nike the Greek goddess of victory from about the 2nd century BC. Even with the significant damage of her missing head and arms, the sculpture is still considered to be a masterpiece. It is one of the most celebrated sculptures in the world. Unfortunately, the sculptor is unknown. And now, ladies and gentlemen, we are standing in front of Notre Dame de Paris, in English, Our Lady of Paris. It is one of the most well-known churches in the world. It is also considered to be one of the finest examples of French Gothic architecture. It is built from limestone that was dug from tunnels beneath the city. I'll have more to say about the building later, but right now we're going inside to listen to a wonderful organ concert. I think you'll be amazed by the fantastic sound. So, if you'll please follow me. That is the audio. If you need to hear it again, just uh, pause the video and go back to listen to it. So, next exercise. We have another listening. In exercise 12, it's listen to the talk. What is the speaker's purpose? Except your chin, you have to listen again, match the adjectives with the nouns. And exercise 14, you have to listen again and choose the correct answers to the questions. So I'm going to play the second audio. The air is chilly in the tunnels. Suddenly a ghoulish looking skull, the bones of a head, appears in the dark. It's gazing out from a wall of human bones, arranged as if an artist was creating a masterpiece. The skull seems to be asking, Has anyone seen the rest of my bones? Rather than running away screaming, most visitors keep walking through the creepy tunnels. What is this place? It's the catacombs of Paris, France, a sort of underground art gallery made from the bones of about six million people. Centuries of death from diseases, war, and France's infamous guillotine resulted in the city's cemeteries being too full, putting people at risk of disease. In 1785, the French government needed to relocate the bodies, but where? The solution, tunnels under the city that had been dug for limestone to build famous buildings such as Notre Dame Cathedral and the Louvre. In 1786, the city began throwing carts of bones into the tunnels to create the catacombs. Around 1810, Napoleon I ordered the bones to be arranged into the artistic patterns we can still see today. Since then, visitors have been lining up to see this strange piece of Paris history. The catacombs are entered through a dark, threatening door. Visitors then go down a spiral staircase for about 20 yards. A sign greets them in the dark saying, 
Arrête, c'est ici l'Empire de la Mort. Translation, stop. This is the Empire of Death. Anyone with the courage to continue follows 17 stops along the tunnels. Walls of arm bones reach out, a frightening welcome. Leg bones arranged with other types of bones create beautiful patterns, as if they're saying that death doesn't have to be completely lifeless. At the Sakellum Crypt, hundreds of smiling skulls placed within a pile of bones seem to stare at visitors. Most tourists are soon ready to leave this spooky gallery, but before they can, their bags must be checked. Believe it or not, some visitors think human bones make great souvenirs. Listen it then and do exercise 13 and 14. It's the same audio. Okay, now we're going to turn to your grammar part of your homework in exercise 15. Choose the correct relative pronouns to complete the sentences. Choose blank when a relative pronoun is not needed. So please remember, we use which for animals, objects, and ideas, who for people, that for animals, objects, ideas, and people. Yes, you can use that for both of them. All right, let's do the first example together. They have just played that song you like. We're talking about that song. So, that is that. Yes. Because who is for people and the song is not a person. 16. Read the sentences. Are the relative pronouns necessary or unnecessary? Now, remember, if there is a verb after the relative pronouns, it is necessary. But if it is another subject, it's unnecessary. Okay? We can see in number one. The musicians that opened the concert have been playing together for five years. Now, musicians, then we have open. So, noun verb, we have that is necessary. Yes? Exercise 17. Put the words in the correct order to complete the sentences with the relative clauses. We have it's a famous Argentinian art museum. Then we have a sort of words. Famous many paintings by American artists has which. So, I of course, you gotta start with relative clauses. Let's do the first example together. It would be which, then, of course, a verb, which has many famous paintings by Latin American artists. Of course, you have to do the other five. 18. Read the sentences. Are the relative pronouns the subject or the object of the clauses. Now, of course, remember, the relative pronoun is a subject when it's followed by a verb, and it's an object when it's followed by another object, all right? The first we have, let's do answer it as an example, the bus which stops on the corner goes directly to the art gallery. The bus which stops, after which we have a verb, and when it's followed by a verb, the relative pronoun is a subject. And, of course, number 19. Combine the two sentences into one with a relative clause. We have the example here already. The artist creates masterpieces. The masterpieces are made with different color lights. And it puts it all together in the artist creates masterpieces that are made of different colored lights. Okay, guys, let's check your homework. Okay, I'm going to answer the exercise while the audio is playing. Excuse me, uh, I wonder, can you help me? Yes. Well, I just went outside to answer a phone call, and when I came back, my laptop was missing. Could anyone have moved it? Uh, well, I don't think so, but I'll check with the other staff. Thanks. Hi, Tom. Working hard? Uh oh, what's wrong? My laptop's missing. Oh, I see. Excuse me, I'm afraid that no one's seen your laptop. Then where is it? I'm sorry to say it looks like someone's taken it. What? My work? Oh, Tom, that's awful. Haven't you got CCTV or something? Uh, unfortunately, our system 
is being upgraded and the cameras aren't recording. So you can't check? That is frustrating. A security system that doesn't work? I hear what you're saying, but we do say that the library can't be responsible for personal items. But it's got all my work on it. Well, I'm sorry to hear that. Do you have a backup? Well, I did. It's just that the Wi-Fi isn't working, and I've been here all day. That's such a shame. Yes, you see. The thing is, the whole computer system's being updated, including the network. I understand, but that's not the point. I do think you should take some responsibility for this. Okay, let's call the police and see what they advise. Guys, please check your answers. Now go to exercise number two. Please guys, try to repeat the intonation. Now I'm gonna play it one by one. Well, I'm sorry to hear that. Well, I'm sorry to hear that. Okay, number two. Number three. That's such a shame. That's such a shame. Four. Um, that's awful. Um, that's awful. Number five. I understand, but that I understand, but that eight. Yes, you see, the thing is, the whole yes, you see, the thing is, the whole. It's just that the Wi-Fi isn't working. It's just that the Wi-Fi isn't working. And... Number ten. Uh, unfortunately, our system. Uh, unfortunately, our system. Excuse me. I'm afraid that no one seen. Excuse me. I'm afraid that no one seen. And finally, number twelve. I'm sorry to say, it looks like someone. I'm sorry to say, it looks like someone. That's exercise number two. Now move to exercise number three. Okay, guys, in exercise number three, remember you had to write two answers. And let's check the audio answers. Please listen. I had a very bad week. I had an accident on my bike on Monday. Oh, I'm sorry to hear that. What happened? Were you hurt? I'm okay, but unfortunately I hit a car. Oh no! So what about your bike? And the car? Well, my front wheel was broken, but the worst thing was the car. I damaged the door and scratched the paint. Oh no, bad luck. The driver told me he was glad I wasn't injured, but that I would have to pay to repair the damage. 
So I have to work extra hours during the holidays to pay my parents back. What a shame. So you won't have much free time then? No. And that's not the only thing. I'm afraid I'm not going to finish my history homework on time. What? No. That's frustrating. How come? I didn't start it early enough. I've been working hard on it this week. But last night I was so tired that I just fell asleep at my desk and woke up in the morning. Oh, I see. Maybe you should ask for more time. Please guys, check your answers. Now go to exercise number four. <laughs> Sorry, I mean exercise number five. Well, in exercise number five, I'm going to tell you if the words and phrases involved are expressing contrast, result, or addition. Let's start. In addition, of course, is addition. Therefore, result. Furthermore, addition. However, contrast. Even though, contrast. Because of this, result. In spite of, contrast. And, moreover, addition. Now check your answers and remember, if you know one word or phrase, please check the meaning. Finally, go to exercise number six. In exercise number six, I hope you haven't had problems. Now let's check the answers. Number one is formal greeting. Number two, reason for writing. Number three, background the problem. Number four, details of the problem. Number five, how she feels. Number six, what she wants them to do. Number seven, items attached. Number eight, request for a reply. And number nine, formal ending. Okay guys, that is your homework and remember we will check the book when we come back to Sene. Bye!